Okay. Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District monthly meeting. It's Wednesday, October 11th, 2017. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we had, um, we didn't have any appointments on the agenda when I made the agenda, uh, but then I met up with uh, Select Woman Bonds, Regina Bonds, and uh, she'd like to speak. So uh, we're going to have her stop. Thanks, yeah. Hello, everyone. I just really wanted to explain something. Um, I don't know if you all heard, but the Board of Selectmen voted a few weeks ago to take legal action against the state of New Hampshire. And the reason why we've decided to do this, I want to let you know nothing's been done yet legally. Town Council's still working on it, um, gathering more information. But we feel that the town of Hampton has drastically been um, neglected. We have a lot of things coming up in the future that need to be addressed. Some things have gone on to the town warrant before unsuccessfully voted through by uh, town residents. And some of us on the board feel that now is the time to simply pursue the third branch of our government, which is the judicial branch. And we have a 1933 document, which I did bring with me, but I'm not really one to um, sit and read off something. But there is just a couple things I want to point out. See, things that somehow in my mind, they seem clear, and then in other cases, not so clear, which is, again, why it's a legal document, because it can really be interpreted two ways. And we're also basing on something that was simply stated by Selectman Griffin a few me meetings ago, but if you actually think about it, it makes sense. This document is 75 years old. What was, what was this speech in 1933? It was a little bit different than it was now. Mm -hmm. um, we've improved greatly, and I know by talking to many owners, business owners down that have been down on this beach for decades, if not more, that in their heads they plan on continuing it to make a great place to live. And people sitting in this room, we have a chamber, we have all these, the commission, we have all these organizations that strive to make Hampton Beach what it is today. It's number one boardwalk in the country, I think. Wasn't it voted number one for boardwalk? Yes. And then we're at another competition right now. We were, what, number two? I don't know if we made it to number one yet. Keep voting. Hmm? Keep voting. I vote voted day. a few times, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just want to explain, and I want to maybe set, I know there's some real nervousness about us pursuing legal action against the state, but I got to tell you, the work that has been done by Selectman Bean, both as a Selectman and a state representative, initially when I first became Selectman almost two years ago now, it's immediately what I started looking at because I'm a finance person, so numbers make sense to me. And I've seen how much money, whether it's from rooms and meals, parking, state facilities that are around Hampton, how much money goes to the state a great state, a state I would not want to live anywhere else. The state's budget from this town, whether it's from businesses or anything, and what we get back, it's not enough. It's not enough to sustain us no longer. We have, we just recently had Wright Pierce finish a report, which I have not completely gone through yet, for the wastewater treatment facility, which has been severely neglected. For whatever the reason, doesn't really matter. But the, every year, we are chancing, we're risking that one of these infrastructures that are the lifeline to our community are going to go. And what's going to happen? We're going to be out, and guess what? So is in the state. So I really think that um, we're not going to be hasty. We're not going to be rushful. We're doing a lot of research. I was just at town hall today, and I met with town manager Welch and the town council, and 
they are doing what needs to be done. And we're going we're gonna to go through with this. I, I can't see that it's not going to happen, but if anyone like has any questions or any concerns about it, I really suggest that you come to a selectman's meeting. Like uh, Chairman Rage was there, you know, he had some current concerns he voiced, but we've, in my mind, exhausted all avenues. And it's not anyone's fault, it's just this is the way it is, and this is why there's a third branch of the government. And that's all we're doing is simply pursuing that branch. And I'm sorry Mr. Nine resigned, but like I said, I really, in my heart, this is why I became selectman, to make sure that Hampton stays Hampton forever. <coughs> Thank you. Well, we're not going to let you sit down. We'll okay. Say, uh, <laughs> and we're a little different than the selectman's meeting. So anybody, <laughs> anybody in the crowd that would like to, in the public, would like to ask any questions because we do Definitely. see a lot of things on... 22, and, and I'm sure there's, there's people who have some questions. I have a question. Or a statement. So. I'd like to know, what attempts, Regina, has the, have the selectmen made towards negotiating before we, other than letters and all of that? Well, recently, the actually the town manager and the assistant town manager have tried to arrange meetings with certain state departments. Now, we want to be careful because we don't want this to be directed in any state department. This is directed as the state of New Hampshire as a whole. The judicial branch is for the state of New Hampshire as a whole. That they've been canceled. This occurred recently, August, September. You know, they don't want to include us on any of their plans, this whole 1A reconstruction. Like, yes, we need the drainage fixed, obviously. I mean, John, how many is? You know, this stuff that it can't be ignored any longer. And sometimes negotiating, we've, how long have we been negotiating? How long are we going to continue to negotiate? You know, we have a document that's being read by the town of Hampton one way and read by the state of New Hampshire another way, and that's simply what it comes down to. And it's never, I mean, sitting and negotiating, again, Rick Griffin, he said it the other day, um, Selectman Griffin, I hope you don't mind me quoting you this much, but he said, we've been having these meetings for 20 years, and he's like, we're still sitting here. So, and he said that in public, so I think he'll be okay that I repeated it, but it's true. And it's what I've seen as a spectator, as someone, I don't own a business here, but I've worked in many of them down here, and I've seen it. There's things that need to be done. The road, the 1A construction needs to be done. The west sides of the si sidewalks, if you can even call them a sidewalk, need to be done. As far as we're, we're looking into, you know, there was some comments made, well, we're not too sure on the ownership of the sidewalks. But if you read this document, which I will quote something from it actually, um, this is under the joint resolution, okay? So this is Hampton may maintain for public uses a bandstand, comfort station, chamber of commerce, buildings, or similar structures, the present parking spaces. Now, the present parking spaces were those parking spaces in 1933. And if you look at the beach in 1933, same parking spaces. So where's our parking that we're supposed to have? Things like that. Um, they, they say that we're supposed to be responsible for public order and uh, sanitation. When you take sanitation, that just doesn't mean trash, because now what we have is, yes, the state gives us fees to use our transfer station, to bring the trash to our transfer station, but that's additional wear and tear. Public order, I wouldn't see fire as being part of public order. That's over the past five and a half years, that's three quarters of a million dollars spent by Hampton Fire Department for state functions. I mean, obviously, it's the way it's got to work because it's there in Hampton. Obviously, we want whoever gets injured in Hampton at the beach, no matter where it is, we want them to be taken care of. 911 call in Hampton. It's got to be, Ham it's got to be handled by the best fire department there is, the Hampton Fire Department. Same thing with the police. But 20 to 25 percent of our police budget is for that. So all this money that is being used to maintain down here is coming out of, guess what? Our pockets, right? The taxpayer is what I'm talking about, not the town, the taxpayer. We have a $13 million bond on the town warrant for work done at the wastewater treatment plant. Do you think it's going to pass? I hope so, but do you think? Well, guess what? The state is just as much in need of that wastewater treatment plant as the town is. Same with those mosh pipes that take everything off this beach. 
So we simply want them to start coming in and, you know, the 1.5 million we're going to get back over the next biennial for the rooms and meals tax for the town, I don't know what the precinct's going to get, ain't going to cut it. So it's time to fight, and it's time to fight hard. And if it, we don't mean to hurt anyone or offend anyone, but this is just what we feel needs to be done because everything else has been exhausted. Anything else? Regina, you mentioned uh, ownership of the sidewalks, okay? I know for a fact. A few number of years ago when I had some work done at my house and I had to go before the Board of Adjustment, about us had to be notified. Okay, that's just the way right. it works. And I know for a fact that the front of my house on Ocean Boulevard, my neighbor is not the town of Hampton. My neighbor is the state of New Hampshire. Correct. Okay, who owns that land in front of my house. In other words, the sidewalk and the street, of course, and the parking lot. But to be very clear and on the record, it's the state of New Hampshire that owns that sidewalk, period. I would agree with you. Well, I'm, I'm just telling you what's in the registry of deeds. Right. Because I've been there as well when I bought the house. And I know who the owner is, and it's the state of New Hampshire. But I just, I, does anyone else have any questions? Maybe not a question, Regina, but is it possible that that document could be uh, available for library so that we anybody could go down yeah, and definitely. read it over? So would you see that that happens? So, I will, yes. I know I don't know how many pages it is, but it's not. No, I it's not it, no, not very long at no, all. Yeah. I think it would be uh, yeah. beneficial. But it's not short, but it's not long. Yeah. <laughs> so people can go in and read it over. And Definitely, draw yeah. Their own conclusions or their own opinions on it. Like was that in the uh, yearly book? You know, the, I don't know. This is actually to get this. They have to like copy it out of the actual book that it, it originally came from, so I think. Yeah, but I mean, I would think something like this could be available to at the library. I, would think, yeah, I, I appreciate that. I mean, we're always referencing it, so it would be helpful, I would imagine, if you guys are watching the board's welcome meetings. If I understand what you're saying, you're asking town council to prepare a declaratory judgment to file in the Siberia court to interpret the meaning of the 1933 contract between the two. Um, well, we yeah, I mean, we feel that the contract is we're, we we should be getting some things that we're not doing, like the parking, the whole parking. We've never gotten any parking spaces back. They've only taken them away. Is it possible you could consider asking outside counsel to render an, an opinion on the probability of success of that litigation before entering into it? I think town council is in a particularly difficult position right now. It's, it's, so this may be a short-term break in the, uh, you know, the process of going into litigation to determine whether there might, and in that course, there might be an opportunity to come up with some alternative to litigation to get an interpretation of the contract. There's a danger here that the court could actually rule heavily against him to, in interpreting that or for it, but it's, it's kind of a roll of the dice. But it's not just, I mean, I brought the contract in because it was trying, it would try to help me summarize things, but it's not that. It's, if you just look at it, like, forget, pretend we don't even live here, and you have a factor that is contributing to make a bigger factor successful, and the factor that's doing that is suffering drastically, infrastructure-wise. Now, it's great to go and make everything look great and wonderful and pretty and, you know, you got all the new condos and, you know, Al did his Bernie's thing and anything else new that has happened in, like, the past few years. But what everything underneath is not getting touched, it's not going to matter anymore. Do we know what kind of percentage and revenue we bring in versus the rest of the state? Working on that. <laughs> a lot. They won't you know, tell you. They won't tell us, so we're going to ask the business owners down here what they pay. You're not going to get all that. Re it's it's got to come through the state. Yeah. The but it's no, got to come from the state. Should that stuff be public be record? How much revenue? It's all in. It's all region or county. They They're claiming they can't break it out. They claiming they don't know what each business pays. Well, they'll say Seacoast as opposed to. They'll say Rockingham County and Hillsborough County, and those are the two largest that I've looked at. I looked at it just the other day from the Governor's Council on Tours and going back 
10 or 15 years. I don't know if you get to open that up. But. All right, so I'm, I'm going to say my piece because I have already so that people will know. I, I understand that there is a need, that we need more. I don't agree that we should be taking the state to court. I think that we have a governor that, 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 that finds value in Hampton Beach. I think we can work closer with them. I was at some of these meetings, and I'm not going to name any names, but there were questions asked to certain people and never got answers back. And I, and I, and I gave some of those questions out. So I, I felt that we had meetings, and then after the meeting, everybody went their own way and nothing got done. From the state level, the town level, the village district level, I don't. I can't say that the state isn't doing things. We have a fifteen million dollar investment on on the east side of Ocean Boulevard that we got because the representatives, the senates, the the, the village district, the town of Hampton, the area commission all got together, and it wasn't the Republicans, it wasn't the Democrats, it was all of us got together, and we convinced the state of New Hampshire to help Hampton because they, they, they saw the value of Hampton Beach and how much money we made to spend $15 million. The Hampton Area Commission has, has succeeded in moving the, the Ocean Boulevard project up into the 10-year uh, ten project. Everything in the state is, is you think the town is slow? <laughs> you think that everything in the state is, is super slow. Uh, an $8 million refurb of, of Ocean Boulevard and the sidewalks they've offered us and it's moved forward into the 10-year plan. We sue them, that 10-year plan is gonna to go to 20 or 30. They're not gonna care. Um, we're looking at five to $10 million for repairing and, and redoing the, the Hampton Bridge. I'd say if, that, if we, we sue them, we're talking a Band-Aid on that bridge and maybe the bridge closed. You're gonna tell all these fishermen and all, and all the there already is there. a Band-Aid on the bridge. Uh, and that's why it's moved forward. It, because it, it hasn't been maintained properly. It's been moved forward. It's an old bridge. How old is that bridge? <laughs> 60, yeah. 63, somewhere around there? So now we finally get, have them brought us up into this, this future plan of getting this stuff done. Senator Stiles, bullied them in Concord to get the seawall done. And she made deals left and right with both but, Democrats and Republicans, and millions and millions of dollars were gone to the seawall. But see, according to that, that should, it shouldn't have to be fought for. It That's have in to the be fought, agreement but it, it right did. here for them to do it. I understand that. And, 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 and Senator Hollingsworth did the same thing. She fought for it. Again, Democrat and Republicans working together. So we've been, we're very fortunate that we've had senators from Hampton, from, from Bev Hollingsworth to Senator Stiles to Senator Preston, that have, have been able to work hard and, and get respect through the state of New Hampshire. And, and, and I'm all for that they should be giving us more. I've been saying that for a long time. But the method of getting more is going to hurt us more than help us. And, and I'm telling you, we could win this thing 100% in court, and in the long run, we're going to lose. And that's if we win. I don't think we can win. So I, I just think it's a, I think we're walking on very thin ice, and I, I just think, I think we that we win. need to have, I disagree, I'm sorry. I think we I need disagree. to have some arbitration up there and, and, and not talk lawsuit, talk negotiation, so, maybe through a third party like Bob said. So I, I really think yeah. I mean, I think Bob's idea is a good one, but I think eventually it's going to come down to this because it's there's not time. Ten years, the bridge isn't going to last. I mean, I was up there. The, I get know well, the guy it's that in runs the it. ten year plan. That means it moves forward from twenty years. It's in the ten year plan where it's moving forward, and now that ten year plan should m be brought up to a next year because it's falling apart, and they're going to have to do something. Will they band aid it? because the town, they're mad at the town of Hampton? Probably. Will they replace it because they're happy with the town of Hampton? That would be the scenario I'd like to see. So that, that's just my opinion, and I respect yours. And It's band-aided now. They, know. Do you know ever since when it broke down, I went up there. I knew the guy that worked up there. I went up there two days later. You can't take the thing out of the first gear to move it up or move it down. How long does it take for something to get like that? 
the, and they're going to wait till it, they were going to la- they waited right till it didn't lift whatever it was didn't lift up lift down can't do that can't do it anymore I'm sorry but we can't there's things that need to be addressed and they need to be addressed now and the, you know no, I, this I is what the money has to go toward it's not just the Hampton it's the whole state it's the sustaining the whole entire state what we do, hundreds of millions between everything, goes and gets funneled that way and gets dispersed out. Hampton needs it now. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Hampton needs it now. I would like to make Regina, can I ask a question, please? I think there's a lot of confusion between the, um, or at least amongst the people in the community. What specifically, and would you clarify, what exactly are you suing the state for? Money? Or well, we're going to start with we don't feel like they're what following. Does the lawsuit entail? Could you be clear about that? Well, we're still working on that, but right now we don't feel as if they are following through on their end of the 1933 agreement. Well, if everybody's hearing about lawsuits. Does anybody know what that entails? Do we have an idea of what we're going to go sue, or are we just going to go sue? Because people are confused. Well, it's going to be on every aspect. It's going to be on the roads. It's going to be on the side. Everything that everyone has constantly complained about that has not gotten done and has never gotten done, it's everything. It's what we contribute. It's what we have and has not been not been handled properly. Well, I guess I just would like to join Chuck in saying this. I respect other people's opinions, and I think everybody in this room is well aware of how much money the people from this town and beach put into the state coffers. There's no doubt about it. You may not be able to come up with an exact dollar or cent value, but it's a lot. Now, the question or the the statement I just want to say to you is I have to agree with Chuck. I think the Board of Selectmen is traveling on a very slippery slope. And the people who are going to get hurt are every single one of us. Grant you, we have our complaints, we need things, but I, as one citizen, would like to say I think this is a dangerous course that you're on. I would like to see negotiation and uh, who knows, the right combination of people can get the negotiations done. Thank you, that's all I have to say. I'd just like to add one more thing. The Rockingham Planning Commission made a Hampton Beach vulnerability assessment projected on different levels of sea level rise going forward. All of those projections are bleak, going to be difficult to address. Some are worse than others. But I think it's critical that we have the state totally on board as those issues come before us to support what will need to be done in time to save the beach from Mother Nature. And lawsuits usually leave the two parties very unfriendly with a lot of animus toward each other. And as Chuck says, you can win and you can lose. And you can lose by winning because some somebody at the state level can just throw your request or something in a bucket sign the wrong piece of paper, just not address it at all. It's very complicated, and you don't know where this thing ends up because it's not predictable. The, the only publicly expressed outcome of this discussion is the fact that John Nyan has resigned as the chairman of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. That was not intended by anyone. That's what I would call an unintended consequence of the potential for the litigation. And I don't think that will be the last unintended consequence that will come up. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. And we're not against wanting more. <laughs> we always want more. Just the way about getting it. <laughs> All right. Simply the third branch of the government. That's, That's right. All, it is. all right. All right. Uh, we're going to go right to old business. Um, we talked. We had a, a little work session, and a lot of you were there, and to come up with something for the week after the fourth. 
and it seemed to be the most popular thing that we talked about was doing a country western week um, so um, we had a few ideas coming forth so we'll be working on that and then future giving some more ideas if anybody has some ideas want to let us know now that would be great too uh, we had a lot a lot of volunteers people wanted to help so we always can use help and volunteers and suggestions so do you have anything to say on that though? I, I did make a comment that in deference to the situation in Las Vegas that we need to perhaps hold off on a lot of advertising right now on that, on the oh, Western yes, yes. whatever. Oh, okay. But that's okay. But, you know, we will, we will move forward when we feel it is okay. appropriate. Um, Christmas parade. Last three years, three years, we've been I believe so. in, involved in the Christmas parade, and we just... Maureen got the notification to sign up again, so I'd like to make a motion. Or have one of you make a motion whether we should uh, be in it or not. Okay, I'll move that we continue to be in and support the Christmas parade. Do I have a second? I will second. Oh. I was going to amend that motion oh, to no. authorize Glenn French to pick the music. Oh, yes, together. absolutely. I'm with you. <laughs> All right, do I have a second? You do. I'll second. All in favor? Okay. We discussed dates for the sand sculpture contest. So I talked to a lot of people about the dates on the sand sculpture contest. And I think the, the way the calendar works, it does set it back further than what we would like. But bringing it forward, I think, is a mistake because we're trying to bring people in earlier. Okay. So I, I think that having the, the contest over that weekend of the 16th, 16th. The, the sand sculpture competition. Um, I think we should keep it having the actual awards that weekend of the 16th. The 16th is the Saturday? It's the Saturday. I think going too far in, we're too close to the 4th. And then at that work session meeting, we had a lot of comments about keeping the, the sculptures up through the 2nd of July which is a Monday, so we'll, they'll be gone on Monday morning. So I didn't know if we want any more discussion on that, if, or if anybody has any comments on that. So you're talking two weeks after the judging to have the sculptures remain? June. Of June. Did I say July? I'm sorry. Of June. Um, yes. So we hired a uh, independent company to do the security, and they did a great job. And um, we took it down the week before that. And there was a lot of complaints from people saying they wanted to see it, they didn't get to see it, and they missed seeing because they were they were used to us keeping it up further. I think the 4th of July is just too busy on the beach and to take all that space up where people want to lay out in the sun and want to fill the beach up, I think taking it down the Monday before the 4th. So the 4th is on a Wednesday. So it'll be gone. I think they're out by 6 in the morning. Is that right, Glenn? They're out pretty early, right? Yeah. So they're out by 6 in the morning. So I think that date is a good date. Um, that was what we discussed at the meeting. So is there any comments from anybody about that, N not wanting that? or No? So you want to go forward with that? Yeah. Do we need a motion? All right, I'll move that we hold the sand sculpture contest beginning on June 16th and to end with the taking down of the sculptures no later than July 7th. They and do have the sand drop on the 8th. That, that means the sand is dropped on June 8th. On June 8th. Mm -hmm. And they do the pound down and everything on the Wednesday before, I believe, and the actual competition is that weekend. Mm -hmm. All right. 15, do I have a second on that? Uh, yes. Did you discuss it with Greg? Does he? I did discuss it with Greg. He's these, open to either. He likes these dates, but he's open to switch them if we want to. Oh, fine. Um, I, I, I did talk to a lot of people, and um, they seem to they seem to like it a little earlier. And again, weather is a factor. Hopefully, we have the good weather, but we've had bad weather the last part of June as well. So let's just hope we have good weather through it. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Done. All right. A lot of stuff. All right. That's it for old business. New business. Maureen, any new business? Um. No, I was just wondering, Glenn, if we 
We don't have any dates on the prom and all of that high school coming, do we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, good. Um, junior prom is the 19th of May. That's a Saturday. Okay. And I haven't talked to the high school about the band, but on their calendar, uh, they will be on the seashell stage May 29th, which is a Tuesday very early in the season, but the way the calendar falls for them, they graduate. So we're going to have the ice. There was a nice show last year, too. It was. That was a nice show. Yeah. They're really talented. Yeah. When's kids. their graduation? I, Usually like the, the second or... I don't know. It's you know, like senior week. There's a ton of activity. So is it May 29th a bad day to be coming down? That's the probably one of the few days they could come down. Oh. They always have band camps during the summer. They also have. Right? So it's Tuesday the 29th. Tuesday the band and the chorus both come. I'll certainly ask. Okay. Julie is suggesting that we try to get the high school back and the chorus back during the summer months. I mean, the they're, just is they're out of school. We'd love to if they. I mean, their argument is they're not in school and they well, maybe can't connect them. Well, maybe if you give them a nice little contribution, they'd be more than willing. They could use it <coughs> as a fundraiser, per se, and the band always needs money. Yeah, are you I speaking for the precinct or are they changing? Can't, can't see well, you can split it. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to give them something. <laughs> but it's a great show. It really is a terrific I remember talking to, I forget the man's name now, who did the who did the band, not the chorus man, the other one, who is who left and now there's a new person. We talked to him about something, and his his response I remember was, um, the kids are not here, and we can't. They was, yeah, they're not around, so we could try it. But even with, I don't think it's something that they're willing to do. Don't they have band camp that want to kind of? I mean, most high schools do. Well, I remember back in the day that the band would be brought back early, exactly, like two weeks before mm -hmm. school started, and they would be practicing together and everything. They so they were ready, game. right? So they'd be ready for the seat for the for football game. First, uh, so that would be August or September. So it would be August. So maybe maybe we get them for September because, fun? and yeah, you got to remember they're not they don't do that right. here. Really? Even if you got them for well, I mean, Salem High had like 250 yeah, band students, nice. and they were so crazy. Money? Something for around Labor Day. I mean, I have them do a performance. They Towards were, the end of they August, not beginning of September. Enough. Yeah, that's that their the argument. The band director and the chorus director are not comfortable bringing the group in because they're not together. They're enough. not in sync. They lose the seniors leave them, they get freshmen in, yeah. and they're and not they really ready, apparently. Then they're being, you'd have to talk to administrators. See if they could help you with that, right? Yeah, they said they don't start. They don't start early at Winnicott. Kind of. yeah. The other thing, Glenn, they have. Don't. What about their? Uh, do they have a um, a jazz band, which is like ten kids or yeah, something like that? So you could have them, maybe. Yeah, maybe you could do that. Yeah, I think anything that we can bring local people that to the beach. That they had was really outstanding. I, I saw that maybe two or three years ago where they would come in and present colors. J-R-O-T-C. Yeah. yeah, very, very nice. I mean, it's the just the prize that is the day. Like, that's the one we need to be prepared for. Well, when we go to meet with them, I think we should also have a little side meeting with the band man and have another talk about that and see if we can't do anything. We'll give it a try. You know, we tried to invite them for New Year's Eve and there was a kids are scattered at during school the vacation. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is that? They still believe they're in the band. Fun. Doesn't mean they have dates. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> they went home for the holiday. <laughs> no, I'm Almost kidding. Yeah. See, same to a 17, 18, you know, 16, 17 year old who wanted to play for New Year's, New Year's Eve. Eve. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, over by. Right. It's over early enough, so it would only be an early an early show. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, a lot of groups march on all kinds of parades, yeah. Memorial Day, et cetera, et cetera, uh, back home. So, and, yeah. you know, band programs are wonderful up here. Yeah. 
And I'll bet with a little push in the right direction, you could probably. Of course, a lot depends on what the band director wants. Yeah. Well, that's what you got I that know. right. <laughs> well, I know when I was in I was in the Salem High Band that they. Uh, what did you they, play in the Salem? I was a drummer. So. <laughs> So they, they would get they would do almost anything where they got some type of stipend. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so that comes in yeah. You could perform with the boys from Salem. I could. <laughs> Can you? Could you the drummer? There you go. Could you drum with a cello? I could do it all. I don't think they go together though. The right? only problem was I used to play a little louder than everyone else, so it, <laughs> you could always hear me, but not Marie always the other the, the That's others. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Next. Any more new business? <laughs> I'm still getting over the drum thing. Um, uh, no, I don't think I have to. Do I have anything? Do you have anything we need to talk about? You and I have to talk about talent, but other than that. Okay. All right, Bob, we'll move to you. Two things. I'd ask you as chair to communicate with the cable committee in town and see if they would live stream these meetings at the beach. I think there's some money in the budget. And we could ask them if they'd be willing to. Is it to wired for that? Is it something that's easy to do? Uh, I, the only number I'd ever heard was like $10,000 to set it up technically. They would have a better handle on that. Uh, it's just, I just think live meetings have more of a touch than seeing something that it's like watching a baseball game that happened last week it isn't quite the same and my other comment is i would move to nominate shannon rage to continue as one of the two representatives to the hampton beach area commission from the precinct may i have a second is he up i'm up in november oh, I'll Why second that. I <laughs> you got it all, all in favor hey. <laughs> Upstate. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it was fixed. <laughs> <laughs> fixed as in, as they say. All right. I'm making sure. I, oh. So I'm very sad, um, but I, I want to thank Janet a lot uh, for all her work that she's done as the uh, clerk. Yes. Uh, you've done a great job, uh, but she needs to spend more time with family around that time of year. So we have to put out there that we are going to appoint someone. Um, to fill her position for this year, and it'll be up for election for next year. We've already received one person that's interested, and we will make a decision by next meeting. If there's anybody else interested, please let us know. We'd appreciate it. All right. Is that it? I'm fine with me. All right. I would second Janet. You're the person that makes it possible for people to be on this. Yeah, there are certain technical requirements, and if they aren't met, it's over. And you make sure they're met. That's right. And I hope you are excellent at inculcating that, get it done spirit with your successor. And I know Janet has offered to help anyone who is going to do this. She's got everything all organized. I'll even help that day. What a woman. That's right. Thank you, Janet. We appreciate that. Yeah. We'll miss you, though. Thank you. All right, so we're going to do a approval of minutes on September 13, 2017. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I so move. Do I have a second? I will second. All in favor? Bang. All right, public comment. We have a lot of new faces here. Does anybody like to speak? Kathy? No? I want to know who these people are. <laughs> we are very welcome, but I would like to know where do you live? Fellows out. Fellows out. Oh, nice. Really? The neighbors. Yeah, we see you drive by all the time. <laughs> I, I know Does you. She drive yeah, fast. I'm the owner of Ziggy the Cat. Yeah, I. Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't know. How come I don't know them, though? <laughs> I have met you. Does she drive yeah. fast? Did she hit the no, cat? No, I do not. No, she does not. No, we would never be invited. No, probably not. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Did she ever hit the cat? Never. Never. No. He's a, a well-loved cat. Oh, nice. Or a fast one. Well-loved cat. Yeah, he is. You want to speak, Terry? 
Yeah, I was wondering what happened to the... Oh, I'm not getting up there now. Just give me the mic. All right, Just go ahead. <laughs> I'm not getting up there, she I, said. I have a loud voice. What happened to the Canadian appreciation stuff? We haven't, we haven't finished with that one yet. We're still thinking about that, so okay. trying to come up with some ideas. We're going to spend a month in Quebec and Montreal <laughs> in the spring sorting that out. First, we're going to learn French, so we know we'll talk to them yeah. about it also. So we're going to the high school. <laughs> I, I just think that's a really good idea. I like Terry, that. Terry, nothing was discarded. It was just that when we got on the, the uh, Western theme, there were a lot of people who got involved at the meeting. They were all excited and, oh, we're like, we'll join and make a committee and all of this business. So that got a lot of attention. That was the only reason why it came up. Maureen's going to be in charge of the yodeling part. I thought she was doing square dance. No, no. Laurie said she was going to do the line That's right. Dancing. Laurie Sullivan was very involved and, you know, wanted Maureen, to. Maureen, so. I'm on the committee. You're on the committee? I'm on the committee. Excellent. Good. Very good. All right. Any other public comment? Yes, Richard. Just a comment. The minutes of these meetings, I've got, I go on the town hall quite frequently, and I never see our minutes posted down. They're posted on the website. They're posted on the website? Yes. I send them uh, to the website to Paul right. Paquette. Okay, that's for the town. Mm -hmm. uh, I send them to, I think her name's Diane Millett at the fire station right. for posting here. And I send a copy to uh, Sharon Summers. They, unless, is there hard copy posted at the town hall? Nobody posts hard copies of meetings. Well, anymore. I see on the planning board, the zoning board, there's hard copies of their minutes. Well, if posted. you want them posted, I will be more than happy to do that. I think we're required by law to have these minutes posted. They, you're required to post them within the precinct territory. And how about the town? No? They're posted in the town through the town website. And they're posted on our website. They post it here in the fire station. Right. That's sufficient for yeah. I'd be glad to do it if that's what you want. But, but they are avidly read. <laughs> <laughs> right here, right here. All right. Any other public comment? Bill, you must have something to say. I've never seen Bill without without something to say. All right. Closing comments. Bob. I just want to thank everybody who volunteered throughout the year. Uh, even with some Mother Nature adversity, the season came out pretty well. We expanded a little bit this year, and at the end, the expansion looks like it worked well enough, so we'll probably do it again next year in some form or another. Uh, but it's just so many people step up in these communities uh, and, and contribute at every level. And it's just wonderful because their heart's in the right place and they're not just talking the talk and they volunteer them walking the walk. And that's why all these things can happen at the town level, at the state <coughs> level. Uh, and this year we had an event which was co sponsored by the rec department of the town. And that's the kind of thing we'd like to see more of is connectedness to the different groups within the community. And volunteerism is one of the ways that happens. Morning. Christmas parade, December 2nd. Anybody who's talented in the decorating area, do <laughs> let me know. We have to make that float every year. Can't the Continentals do that? I'm sorry? Can the Continentals decorate it? They Oops. can. Glad uh, hasn't informed us who's going to be on that, that float. Oh, yeah. I released a premature. <laughs> no one is. It could be the Beach Boys, it could be the Boston Pops. Boston Pops, it could be the Continentals. Yes, you do. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> well, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, it's great seeing new faces. Um, you know where to find me if you have any questions. Um, my 926-3364. Uh, I'm around every day almost, unless I'm skiing. Then you can find me on the slopes. And that's not for a while. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to close this meeting at 6.13. Thank you very much. Thank you, Channel 22. We appreciate everything. Thanks Thank for the new people for coming.